Hello, in this video I will be showing you how you can sculpt hard edges in Blender. Remember to visit my website, gabbit.co.uk, for more free courses in Blender. And also get across to the Discord server and you can chat to me there. All the links are in the description. So I'm in Blender 2.8 and it's worth saying before I start that Blender is not a great tool for hard surface sculpting. It is much easier to create a mesh using something like box modeling and build your shape up out of basic primitives rather than sculpting a hard surface model. And when I say hard surface model, I mean something like a robot or mechanical in nature. Hard edges are very difficult and they can take a bit of time and they can be quite awkward to manipulate. But it may be that in some of your organic modeling, you might want a hard edge. So I'm going to show you how you can do that. So I'm going to just do this on a plane. So I'll delete the cube and press Shift A, Mesh, Plane. I'm going to subdivide this five times by pressing Control 5 and then I'll go to my subdivision surface and apply that. So now I've got a relatively detailed mesh to start with and I'll go into the sculpting mode and check that we're all happy. That's great. I'll turn Dyn Topo on and I'll start with constant detail to show you how this is going to work. I'll put the detail level to about 25, let's say. And what I'm going to do is turn this into a hard surface thing. <laughs> so to start with, I use the crease brush. I'll pull my brushes out so you can read them. The crease brush there. And the crease brush normally will make a crease like this. But if I hold control down, I can create an edge like that. The only thing is it does pull it upwards. So I'll start off by creating a crease around here. And notice where I'm putting the pressure of my brush. I'm not putting it on the top here with control held down because it will pull my mesh upwards. I'm going to the side here and holding control down. And we've kind of come across our first problem. We haven't got enough detail in our mesh. So I could put constant detail up much higher to something like 50 and try again. And it's doing a better job but it's still very jaggedy. If I put this up much higher, then if I want to work on any of the rest of the mesh, I'll have to put it down again for that part. So constant detail doesn't work particularly well, in my opinion, for hard surface modeling where you're trying to get edges. I like working in constant detail because I know the detail level I'm going to achieve throughout my mesh. But I would say constant detail is for starting your mesh off. After that, you want to go to relative detail which is dependent on how far you're zoomed in. So now when I zoom in, and I'll bring this down to about five, and let's hold control and pull that out. We're getting more detail in our mesh, the closer I go in. But can you notice how it's pulling it out in a sort of ridge fashion? It's pulling it away from our mesh here and, a, and upwards from our mesh here. So the crease brush is very good, for creating the initial stages of that crease, but actually it's not great if you want to maintain a nice edge. So you start off with the crease brush and you find your level. Then I smooth it out so that there aren't any ridges. And then I use the pinch brush. And the pinch brush will pull the mesh into itself to a point. So I go across this and it's keeping its shape, although there's a slight curve, but it's bringing that detail level in. So it's pinching the topology inwards up to this point and from here to this point and pinching it in. And interestingly, Blender created a slight glitch there. I think that's just 2.8 at the moment and it created some extra faces, but when I went into edit mode and back into sculpt mode, they had disappeared, so that's fine. What we're going to need though is more topology to define this edge. But before you add too much topology, make sure your line is nice and clean. I need this to jut out slightly more, and I could do with a flatter top as well. To flatten, you can use the flatten brush, just here, and you can just flatten it out like this. You can also just use the smooth brush as well, so I'm using a combination of the flatten brush and the smooth brush. If you hold down shift, it will use the smooth brush. 
So combining the flatten brush with the smooth brush here to get this flattened area like this. Okay, so it's starting to work, but it's still a slight curve, so we can use the crease brush now and with control held down so it pulls it out. And I'm noticing this is quite jaggedy, so I'll undo that and I'm going to turn this to subdivide edges. Now what that will do is that will mean when I zoom in, it will add detail. So I'll hold down control and make some more detail there. But when I zoom out again and brush, it won't get rid of the detail. So it will keep it at the level it started with. So if I go to wireframe now, you can see it's still got that level. If I zoom out and stroke, it's not getting rid of that level. I'm going to go even more detailed now, down to something like two and a half. And you do have to be careful of this, depending on the power of your computer. And let's try a bit more, first with the crease brush. Just crease out that edge. You can see it going a bit lumpy there, so I'll use the smooth brush to smooth that out. And then come over to the pinch brush to make a nice hard edge like that. And you can see that bringing that level in and creating a hard edge the more I stroke over it. And then I'll use the flatten brush just to flatten out those bits where there's a bit of variation in the shape. And in here as well, a bit of smooth brush just to help it out, holding shift down for that. And we can see a nice hard edge. It's done a fairly good job, but you can see that sort of slight blobbiness along here. That's very tough to get rid of. The flattened brush will help you, but it's still not quite there. So it takes a fair bit of work and a touch of experience to know how far you need to go with these things. So hopefully you can see from this how you can create a hard edge. But like I say, it's very difficult in Blender. It's not the easiest thing to do. I've left this time lapse on so you can see me struggle away with some hard edges. And it gets even tougher when you try to do an indent like I'm doing here, because you can't use the pinch brush so easily because it's not pinching it outwards. And you can see, because it's reasonably high topology now, that the dents it's making are not particularly good. You need to create your shapes before doing any hard surfaces. So always block out first before adding this fine detail. Also, it's probably worth saying that I'm using a graphics tablet here. I have some recommendations in the links in the description. I think this is extremely hard to do this sort of thing with a mouse because you're really trying to get smooth strokes along a line and it's much easier to flow across your screen or your tablet than it is to try and get this with a mouse. I use a display tablet and I find that's really helpful because I can look at what I'm drawing. What I'm doing here is trying to get an indent and this is particularly tough. You might want to use what's called the scrape brush in this scenario and that scrapes off any peaks. I didn't want to go into too much detail with this, but hopefully you can see what's going on here and that may help you. Also, you might need to use the grab brush or the snake hook brush to reorganize your curves and lines. So that's how you can kind of make hard surface edges in Blender sculpting. But like I say, try and make your hard surfaces through box modeling or something other than sculpting. I'll be taking a break over the next couple of days until Sculpt January begins. So look out for my Sculpt January. I should be posting every day from the 1st to the 31st. Thanks for watching and I hope this helps.